Hey Salt House, Pastor Ryan here, and I am here with Pastor Sarah and intern Pastor Zach. And this is Ask the Pastors. The kids from our community have been writing down questions while we've been preaching. <laughs> and we're gonna just like pick a few of them and respond to them. It doesn't mean that we're gonna have like all the answers to your questions, but we are gonna engage them. Why did God let the Egyptian soldiers die in the Red Sea? Oh, man. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you for this. That's easy. Um, this is, you know, what, what's hard about this question is it's kind of, it's scratching at this bigger philosophical question of, like, what we call theodicy or, like, why do bad things happen to good people? Or why, you know, if God is both like all powerful and all good, then why does evil exist even? Yeah. And man, I got whoever wrote this this question. You're digging into some deep waters here, my friend. And um, and they they actually get even deeper, right? Because like the Egyptian soldiers were a part of like so we're talking about the the Exodus story. Um, we're talking about Moses and the people of Israel who are enslaved in Egypt. And God's like, I am on the side of the oppressed, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set you all free. And so God sends Moses, and Moses is like talking to Pharaoh, who's like the king of the, the big oppressive empire, right? And, and the, the Pharaoh's like, nope, not going to do it. Nope, not going to do it. And hardens his heart, hardens his heart, hardens his heart over and over again, right? And that's when we get to this final part where the, the, um, the children of Israel are escaping oppression and slavery, and then the soldiers are going after them to kill them, and then the water comes back over them. That's when this, this happens. But there's other parts in the Bible that are like even like, like more like scandalous, like, oh, yeah. like where where, you know, kids die, mm -hmm. you know, and innocent people die, you know? Yeah. And, and they're, like, going into the, the land. Yeah. And, they're, and, you know, the people of Israel are, are decimating whole peoples. That, like, that even gets even more kind of confusing, even yep. than this question, in, in my opinion. But here's what, here's, uh, here's part of how, here's one way to think about this. So... God is the main character of this story. And the people, and he promises, I'm going to get you out of slavery. And then these people are like escaping. And this big empire is chasing them and is about to kill them. Who do we want God to be in that moment? Mm -hmm. And it's hard because like we have such a 21st century mind about yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. And I just wonder if we were, in this century, hearing this word, if we would just we wouldn't have the same question for the story. Mm. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like an ancient Marvel movie. Almost. It's an ancient Marvel movie, yeah. right? Yeah. Totally, in yeah. a sense. And so, like, you know, if God's like, "Oh no, uh, you know, I brought you this far, but kind of now you're on your own. Now you're getting squashed by this army." It's like, oh, that would be like a very weak. God who can't, like, make good on a, on a promise or, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. I'm just also struck by how God has given Pharaoh and the Egyptians so many outs. Like, so many outs. Right, mm. just let them go, let them go, know. let them go. Like, yeah. they, it's not, he didn't fool them into this. He didn't, you know, they had the chance to get out of there. Absolutely. And, yeah. and, 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 I mean, God just is like, if you want to destroy yourself, I'm not going to stop you. I've given you ten mm. chances not yeah. to. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. you are, you're, you're, you know. You're, you're kind of asking, you're going right into it. So, yeah. I, but this, this question, which like we could like talk about this for a couple hours, this problem <laughs> evil question that I mean, you're I, asking. I got some time. And I, I know, I hope that we do. There is a class on this in seminary. <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, but this, you know, when we get into like God who enters our suffering in Jesus, yeah. man, that's when this question gets really interesting. Well, I think sometimes, like, as preachers, we don't talk about some of these hard stories and, like, terrible things, but, like, it's kind of a gift that the Bible has it for yeah. us. Like, it makes us realize how complicated life is, and, like, that complication's captured in the Bible, too. Yeah. yeah. What if it just skipped over it? Yeah, exactly. Everything <laughs> what if the Bible's like, yeah. yeah. Don't need to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we get a chance to talk about it. Yeah. 
That's a good one, though. That's that's another one that like um, there's not an uh, an answer for it. That's like, oh, that feels satisfying. Right. right. Yeah. It's just something that we continue to like see different sides of it, you know, yeah. as we experience life. Which I think it's like a real tradition in like Christianity of yeah. like how do we continue to like turn it and see it from a different angle at different times. Yeah, and who are we in the story? Yes. And how are we Israel? And how are we the soldiers? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That's good stuff. Yeah. Keep asking that question. That's a good one. Okay, well, I hope that that gave you something to think about because your questions totally gave us something to think about. <laughs> and I just want to encourage you to love asking the question. Mm. You are theologians. Why are you a theologian? Because you're thinking about God. Therefore, you are a theologian. So love that question. Keep asking that question and keep writing it in to us. Thanks, Rince.